I love Yuri. I just can't get enough of it. It all started with one, then I watched more, and now I'm like literally drowning in it all. I don't know what about it I like so much. I think it's maybe the god damn it, why can it not be me type of feeling, but you know. I like a lot of romance series, from the classic to bloom into you to the more taboo ones like Citrus. And I think it would be a good thing to kind of put them all into like a top 10 list for you people. So you can tell peak from peak. Now, this list is going to be a combination of manga slash mangas that are still going on, mangas that are getting adaptations, and animes. Um, some might have light novel adaptations, but we're not covering any that are light novels, like, strictly, since I haven't read any of them. So yeah, let's get on to number 10. Now, I have a confession for this one. I never finished it. I watched it until like episode 5, then I skipped to the newest one that was out at the time, and then I just waited for the last one to come out. It's a good story, don't get me wrong. Basically an isekai that isn't like a normal isekai, but it is like a normal isekai. Uh, the main character is basically overworked to death, to, to the point that she dies and wakes up in her favorite video game, but she puts a spin onto it. Since it's a normal romance game, she's not going to be able to woo the person that she wants to, which is a girl. So she decides to make her own way of wooing. She sets her heart on Claire France... Claire France... Francois? Nah. Uh, the game's main antagonist. With the knowledge that she has of the in-game events and stuff that's yet to come in the game story, Ray tries to get Claire a good and happy ending before the revolution destroys the chance of it all. Revolution- uh, uh, <laughs> I, I just don't- I don't know why I couldn't get into this one. The story was decent, but I just couldn't find a way to get into it. Probably because there was a lot of other stuff airing at the time, like the final episode of Attack on Titan, Spy X Family, Freein, and I didn't really have- and they really put this anime onto the main burner, and I just kind of forgot about it by the time the next season of animes rolled around. I forgot how I found this one, honestly, but I was able to finish it in an afternoon, and it left an impact on me. Haru and Hee-chan are two college girls who are just trying to find a way through, with university and job hunting, and worrying about the future just starts getting to them. They keep feeling like they need to do it like everyone else does. Get a job and work till they're like 70 and then die. Well, they decide they had enough of this life and they decide to escape to an island away from the life they were once living. I think what I really liked about how this one is how it was unrealistic first, but the reality slowly starts to get in. You're in a new place where you've never been before. How do you get money? How do you afford food? Where do you even go to stay? These are all things that these two girls have to worry about, and I feel like the ending is something that really affected me too because of how realistic it, it was. If you like a realistic type of Yuri story with a bittersweet ending, this is a quick 16 chapter manga you can probably finish within an afternoon. <laughs> Well, how do I explain this one? If you're into etchy stuff, this one's for you. The story follows, get this, Asumi-chan and her quest to find the girl who used to like her. They even kissed, but she just kind of brushed it off. Well, upon learning that Mai, who, who was her previous best friend, might be employed at a brothel nearby, she seizes the opportunity for redemption. However, there's a slight complication. The women featured on the brothel's website do not use their real names. Well, being encouraged, kind of forced, by a seasoned champion, her senpai, Asumi embarks on a journey of self-discovery, exploring her sexuality, and gradually becoming more comfortable in her own skin as she engages with brothel woman one by one in her quest to find Mai. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote it like that in the script. Oh, that's... Oh. <laughs> uh, this is a very interesting manga, mainly because of the etchy stuff, <laughs> but I honestly haven't found... I have found enjoyment out of it. I like seeing the situations Asumi gets herself into, then going broke, then having to do lewd, a lewd photo shoot with her boss to make big bucks so she can go buy more prostitutes. Uh, every person's dream. Ore. 
Oh, <laughs> this anime is a very controversial one. Well, between the two people I know. I tried watching this with two friends, and one said it was interesting, and the other couldn't make it through the first episode. I feel like this is an anime that you either need to go into blind, or just read the manga. Anyway, Yuzu Ahari is a gairu who just transferred to a new neighborhood. You know what that means? A new school. Well, the school is in fact an all-girls school, and has fr and she has frequent clashes with the student council, with one especially being Mei Aihara. Ooh, the last names are the same. I wonder if they, they may be siblings or stepsisters. Mei is a hard-working, stern student council president that everyone looks up to, and well, funny enough, guess what? She's actually stepsisters with Yuzu. Now, I understand <laughs> this is where I'm going to lose a lot of people because the big I word peeking its head through the door. But don't worry, it doesn't get much better from here. Well, they end up having to share a bedroom, and Yuzu does not like this. But then end up growing closer through bonding and sister things. Now, I'm just gonna throw this big content warning out there, so if you can't really handle this type of stuff, just skip to this timestamp. This anime has a lot of sexual assault, and a lot of that is very on call for for the anime. I've heard that the anime cuts out like a lot of important pieces of the manga, giving kind of not giving a lot of incentive in like building up to what happens. So take that with a grain of salt while watching this and or do what a lot of people did and just read the manga. Personally, I haven't gotten around to reading the manga, but it finished with a sequel series, Citrus Plus, which is still publishing as we speak. So yeah. The I'm Kazuma, an associate of the Dojima family. You can come. This is another one of those mangas that just randomly appeared out of nowhere, probably on TikTok or something, but who knows. Now this manga is about a manga editor, Asaki Suga, who decides that moving into a new home is something she needs to get over her breakup with her toxic ex-girlfriend. She finds a good place to rent, very spacious, in a lovely garden, it's also very affordable. But there's something about this house that's very different from the others she had looked at. It comes with a free girlfriend. Well, not girlfriend yet, but you know, just give it time, it'll build. It's a disappointment for Seiko, knowing that she can't live her single life in peace, but her cute landlord also seems to be hiding a big secret from her. She's a former idol, not really a big secret, but yeah. I feel like this is a good manga for people who are really into those nice, simple romance mangas that don't really have anything going on, but it's just people living their life. Uh, AKA, uh, Slice of Mo Life manga. Yeah, I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, but anyways, there's a little drama at the start at least, and it's just a nice story to pick up and read every once in a while. If you're looking for something that's casual read or whatnot, this is a good story in a big change of pace from the last one we talked. Ten years in the joint made you a fucking pussy. All right, so we're moving on into the more well-known type of Yuri media. So yeah, this manga was supposed to have an anime airing in uh, January, <clears throat> but due to production issues, it got pushed back to April. So maybe around that time, I finally get this video done and it'll be airing. So. <clears throat> Yeah. The story follows Himari, who falls head over heels for her senpai, Yori, basically blurting out that she loves her. Well, Yori, after thinking about it, decides that she loves her too, and tries to explain her feelings to Himari. Well, it turns out, Himari meant I love you in a really I appreciate and look up to you senpai type of way, instead of the I really want to make out with you type of way. This kind of throws Yori for a loop on if she should try to continue to pursue a relationship with Hamari or just leave it be. It also doesn't help that Hamari has a girl on her ass because she also likes Yori and stuff. And that's where I left off and I'm not too sure what happens after that. So uh, if you like Kaon and Bochi to Rock but thought there isn't enough girls kissing, then this is for you as well as the number one spot, which we'll get to very shortly. My life is Sad Yuri. Two dreadful words put together to make even more dreadful word. Where do I even start? This 
Manga is sad. Dealing with a lot of sensitive topics such as bullying and losing someone who's very close to you. This manga only re recently finished, so now would be a great time just to binge read it. It also recently got nominated for an anime adaptation, so that would be wonderful to see. The plot follows Shizuki, a shy girl who really talks to anyone, and said losing herself in writing. I know of another person who got lost inside his own writing, but that's a story for another time. Well, Shizuki has been spending her time creating a novel that no one would read. But when Kaori, Shizuki's popular and cute classmate, gets a hold of the manuscript, everything changes. Kinda like this other story- Okay, I'll stop. Kaori becomes a huge fan of Shizuki's work, not knowing what she just read was basically Shizuki's suicide note. Well, Kaori suggests that the two should start dating so that Shizuki could get more inspiration for her writings. But there's a twist. Why does there always have to be a twist? This is a very depressing story. One where it's uh, I know what's going to happen at the end, but I don't want to believe it's going to happen. If you're interested in the sad type of story, then be my guest and read this masterfully crafted piece of art right here. Lumi to You is probably the most popular Yuri anime manga out there. You've most definitely heard about it from a friend or seen a picture of it on Twitter or just, you know, breathed and it sounded like the words you or Toko. Lumi to You has a very simple story. Yu has always been in the shoujo manga and can't wait for the day that she'll finally have her shoujo type of confession that will send her heart bursting into flames. But then she gets confessed to and she's like, that's it. Now being disappointed and confused, she enters high school unsure of how to respond to that confession at the and until she meets Toko, Nanami, who she witnesses turning down a guy with a burst of maturity, and she's inspired to ask for assistance, but then Toko asks you out, and it all spirals from there. <clears throat> Look, they're kissing by episode two. That's insane ro that's insane by romance standards. Now, I 100% guarantee that if you're watching this video, you have at least seen the anime, and for those who have not read the manga, go read it. And for people who have finished the anime and the manga, well, guess what? Go read the manga and watch the anime again. Lumen to You's anime will most likely not see the light of day for a second season, much like a lot of Yuri animes out there, mainly being Citrus and Adachi to Shimamura, with both being very popular but not in the high enough demand to warrant a season 2. Speaking of Adachi to Shimamura, I think it's time we move on to my personal favorite Yuri anime. <laughs> This one is a personal favorite, and I think the reason for it is that I have a connection to the main character. The story follows Sakura Dachi and Hugetsu Shimamura, who are first years in high school. They end up encountering one another one day after both of them decide to skip classes, which causes them to become friends. Over time, however, like most stories, Adachi starts to develop feelings for Shimamura, but at the same time, she has difficulty trying to express these feelings to her. At the same time, however, Shimamura doesn't see any romantic potential in Adachi, and only really sees her as a friend. In a basic format, the series follows Adachi's journey of trying to ask out Shimamura and basically trying to find out what she's feeling and how to express it. In a way, it's kind of like Bloom Into You, where the main characters can't really understand love and what it truly is, but at the same time, it's kind of inventing its own thing. The light novel of the series is currently over, with 12 volumes in total. The manga has currently only 4 volumes, as the release of new chapters are really slow. Some days have been taking months for a new one to release. However, the speed um, at which the chapters come out seem to be picking up the pace, so that's really exciting to hear. And finally, the anime is a simple 12 episode Yuri, with no hopes of seeing a season 2. I really feel like this this series would benefit greatly from a season 2. Since the light novel is over and a lot of people don't like reading light novels due to them being like actual books, but you know. People who like characters who can't really do anything for themselves and struggle on a day-to-day -day basis with trying to function with no end in sight for the relentless struggle and torture to end, well, this might be the anime for you. Uh, before we move on to the last one, I would like to give a few honorable mentions. Bacca 
وسطه بکاری نو بکای لو انا تو ایشی تر This manga holds a very special place in my heart, as it's one of the two series I have bought whenever a new volume came out. I love this story just so much, and the characters are also so amazing. The main characters start dating within the first book, but everything isn't all hunky-dory going forward, as you see. As you know, relationships can have a lot of bumps. The story follows Miwa Inuzuka as she enters her first year of university, and by chance, she becomes friends with a girl named Seiko Sawatari, who is basically the polar opposite of her. Miwa decides to join the music club after receiving an invite from Seiko, and while talking, both of them accidentally reveal that they're lesbians. Wow. This is going fast, is what I said when I f first read the series. <laughs> Seiko suggests that they should start dating even though they just kinda met, and Miwa is kinda hesitant because she doesn't really have feelings for Seiko. But her interest in love and wanting to see how it goes entices her, and that's when they start dating. You can see this series covers a lot of sensitive stuff, such as sexual assault, as Mila goes through it twice. This series sometimes is hard to read because you just feel bad for these characters. They genuinely suffer at times, and they go through a lot. The series is another one of those what is love type of deals as me and Seiko when we start dating because they're lesbians, which does lead to some pretty bad stuff as Miwa meets back with her high school crush, or when Seiko forces herself on the Miwa. Another thing is that it's etchy, but not as etchy as some other things like Asumi-chan and that. This series is a must-read for everyone, even if you don't like Yuri and are only into romance. It's an amazingly realistic series that has honestly made me cry, and like, just ponder what will happen. I ended up recently after reading the 10th volume to start reading it online, because I got tired of waiting months for any updates to the series, and well, I blasted through all available chapters in like two hours. So, you know, go read this one. Yuri is personally one of my favorite genres. If you look at my Twitter account, I literally have biggest Yuri fan in my Twitter bio, so yeah. But these series all have something that I really like in it, whether that be action, gentle romance, girls who can't function normally, or a realistic portrayal of expectations placed on the oneself. They're all just really amazing. I mean, feel like you should really take time and really dive into one of these series. And hell, you can just watch the ones that have an anime in the afternoon. 12 episodes are not a joke. I hope you found this list helpful for your next Yuri journey, or like... A normal journey? I don't even know. I hope you enjoyed the list and enjoyed my commentary or something, but yeah, I'll see you all in like, I don't know, November when I finish all the Yakuza games. So yeah, see ya. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>